All right, Nerd Lost Blood coming to you from Southern California here. Happy Monday. It's April 15th, 2019, 312 in the afternoon, California time. All right. Uh, love, love this topic. I mention this quite often. I want to do a quick video on it. I believe there is a huge, speaking about uh, Trump language, <laughs> somebody always says, huge, bigly. There is a huge possibility that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, returns during a Trump presidency. Yeah, you can't rule that out. I'm reading some of the headline news today, and it's amazing. Here's two hours ago. Here's 20 hours ago. People are talking about it all over. Uh, RushLimbo.com. Trump raises more than top Democrats combined. <laughs> Trump raises more money than top Democrat, Democrats together. MarketWatch.com. Uh, Trump doubles fundraising totals of top Democrats in the first quarter only. New York Times is talking about the, uh, Trump's 2020 campaign raises over $30 million in the first quarter. What? Love it. Uh, that was New York Times, New York Magazine. Trump raises $30 million in, fr in, in first quarter, smashing Democratic numbers. Boom! <laughs> My, 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 USA Today, Washington Post, seven hours ago. Here's Washington Post. Trump campaign said it raised $30 million last quarter. The largest haul for him in, in, uh, in record, yeah. USA Today, Donald Trump 2020 campaign to report $30 million in fundraise. Oh, that's got to make the devil angry. Why, why, why does everything Trump touch turn to gold? <laughs> Yeah, and even if Trump makes a mistake, it's somehow the Lord kind of cleans up his messes. Yeah, and, and did you notice, by the way, everybody that attacks Trump ends up uh, being squashed? Everybody that attacks Trump sooner rather than later gets squashed. <laughs> Can you say Avenatti? <laughs> Can you say Stormy Daniels? Yeah, I even think uh, you can look at Whoopi Goldberg. You'll say, well, she's been in the hospital now a few times now for uh, some kind of breathing problems. I tell you, you're cursed if you come against what God is doing. I'm not saying Trump is Jesus Christ, the Messiah, but I am saying that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, put Trump into power to resist the New World Order. 100,000%, my friend, yeah. <laughs> and if you know Bible prophecy and you're not screwed up with dumb religious thinking, uh, you know that the greatest resistance against evil will happen just before Jesus Christ soon return. Jesus Christ is showing off and attacking the Antichrist system now more than ever before in history as a whole. Now, hey, the, the, the worldwide flood was pretty good too. <laughs> but there's more population now, right? Yeah. <laughs> than ever before in history. <laughs> Putting things in perspective. Yeah, the flood, yeah, gave a, you know, a, a big clue that God was ticked off with the enemy. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm telling you, God is pouring out a spirit now in the last days more than any time in history. The early and the latter rain, the Bible says, the power of the Holy Spirit is being poured out on the whole earth. Uh, and by the internet as well, God is using the internet to bypass the fake news, bypass the fake religion, bypass the fake politicians, and gets the, and gets the information to the people. I saw that this morning you have the, uh, what is it, the, the cathedral in Notre Dame. Notre Dame there in uh, France is burning to the ground. You can burn churches and this, that, and the other, and they can all burn. I'm not talking about, uh, I'm talking about ISIS. I'm not talking about people doing uh, crazy things to churches. I'm talking about Jesus is not a church. Jesus is not a, 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 a symbol. Jesus is not an organization or a religion. All right, so yeah, I mean, it sucks that the, that the uh, cathedral is burning to the ground, or at least part of it. But my Jesus is strong as ever. My Jesus is not a Notre Dame uh, cathedral, eight hundred year old. Yeah, so yeah, it sucks that you know history is burning, but that's what wood does. <laughs> eight hundred year old wood burns pretty fast, I would say. Yeah. Jesus said, the hour comes and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in spirit and in truth. Woo! <laughs> Pardon me while I spit. <laughs> I get so excited. Yeah. The true worshipers are not into worshiping buildings or synagogues or mosques or temples or religious organizations, institutions, uh, political parties, or any of this stuff. 
or into worshiping God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, God the Holy Spirit, and doing what he wants. Yep. I said, that's what that is. Hey, that's what that is. All right, so when I look at stuff like this, it reminds me, I'm going to read some of these articles because it's got to make the New World Order angry. They just hate, you know, recording this. Oh, no. Uh, I'm going to read from New York Magazine here. Uh, it, it says, smashing Democratic numbers. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I was reading from the Wall Street Journal, I think it was yesterday. Uh, they were talking about Trump is two years ahead in his campaign uh, than any Democrats or even Republicans. Sure. Ain't nobody's even on the radar yet. They're trying to put people on the radar in the Democratic and Republican Party. It's like, who are they? <laughs> so I'm going to read from here from uh, Trump raises 30 million, smashing Democratic numbers. But let me read here uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I did a video uh, a while back called Trump's Name in the Bible. Millions of people have watched that video, and I wanted to just remind people that there's a huge, huge possibility that Jesus Christ returns during a Trump presidency. It could be his first term. It was, what, two years left? He's just, what, two and a half years? Less than two years left uh, in his first term. Uh, Jesus Christ can return in his first term when he's president. Yeah, or he could, uh, Jesus can wait and return in his next term. So think about it. If Jesus waits till the end of Trump's second term, we have approximately just under six years left before the return of Jesus Christ, or before, or tomorrow. But I'm, I'm saying there is a huge possibility that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, returns during a Trump presidency. Look at these. Look at this verse. The verses around it. First uh, Corinthians fifteen fifty two. And this is the Old English version, King James version, which I think is more accurate in this particular verse. And when I looked at it in the in the Greek as well. There are clues here, I think, pointing to a Trump presidency. Or could be. Yeah. Now, I, I didn't say that Jesus is coming back during a Trump presidency, but I'm saying he could, and there's a huge possibility that he would. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 15, 52. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. In a moment, bingo, in the twinkling of an eye, twinkle, split second, at the last Trump. At the last Trump. At the last Trump. At the last Trump. Is that at the last Trump's second administration? Is that at the last moments of Trump's first uh, term? I don't know. But I think it's very, 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 very interesting. And it could be a huge clue. In a moment, this is talking about the next rapture, when Jesus Christ returns in the heavens above the earth and takes all the born-again, spirit-filled people that are ready to a banquet in heaven, the next rapture. It says, in a moment, bingo, in the twinkle of an eye, split second, at the last trump. Now, some people would say, well, this is talking about a trumpet, is it? Oh, definitely God blows a trumpet. When he returns in heaven, we understand that from the scriptures, because it continues to say, for the trumpet shall sound. But should we just say it's a coincidence that Trump happens to be the president who's not part of the secret societies in 2019, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, and beyond? Or did God know this? Of course he knew this that Trump would be president? Or is God telling us that Trump is going to be president when the next rapture happens? Now, if you read this in the other translations, some of the other easier English translations, uh, I don't think it's as strong because they uh, try to interpret it uh, as a trumpet, but not Trump. Because if you look in the Greek, the Greek definitely has different words for last Trump and the trumpet shall sound. I think there's a major clue here, possibly pointing to the Trump presidency. Yeah. Why not just say, when the trumpet sounds, the dead shall be raised corruptible. Why does it pause here in the old English version and also in the Greek? In a moment, in a second, a twinkling of an eye, part of a second, faster than a second, at the last Trump. At the last Trump. <laughs> Why is Trump having so much success 
against the New World Order. Why can't the New World Order stop Trump? The rapture will happen at the last Trump. And the, oh, for the trumpet shall sound. Now, some of the easy tra easier translations, they will just amalgamate them together and won't give that clue. For instance, here's the easy English. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. When the last trumpet is blown. Now, it, it, it's, it's giving, it's, it's, it's more of an interpretation than a translation. Interpretation is the, is the writers, the, the, the translators, are assuming that when the old English said Trump, it's talking about the trumpet that will sound. Because how did they know that Trump would be president in the last days? Nobody knew, except Jesus. Nobody knew, except the Holy Spirit, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Nobody knew. So I'm not writing this verse up and, and uh, writing this verse off and just saying, well, it's just talking about blowing a musical instrument. <sniffs> when President Trump is in office and he kicked out Barack Hussein Obama, who's the Antichrist out of office. It's not every day somebody comes into a presidential uh, administration office and kicks out the Antichrist. <laughs> Actually, it's never happened in history before. Never in history before has somebody come into a into a administration or a government position and kicked out the Antichrist. Because there's only one Antichrist. And Barack Hussein Obama is the Antichrist. Watch my videos on that. I found out in 2008, September of 2008, Barack Hussein Obama is the Antichrist. That's why the Bible says he comes into power, he gets kicked out of power, and he comes back into power for 42 months. Revelation 13. I'll read it here in a moment. So I'm not going to throw this a, a clue out the window and say, well, I'm just talking about a trumpet. Just because Trump's name uh, re, you know, uh, resembles trumpet. I said, uh-uh, uh-uh. Easy translations just link it in when the last trumpet is blown for, the trump for when the trumpet sounds. So this New Living Translation, for instance, is interpreting that the first trump is actually a musical instrument like the second time it's mentioned as a musical instrument. And I say, no, 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 because the Old English, and in the Greek, says, at the last trump. Then it goes on to say, for the trumpet shall sound. Those are two different words. And it's, this, and it's two different words and uh, clues also in the Greek. <laughs> That's why I did a video stating that Trump's name's in the Bible, and it is. And is it a uh, clue to Jesus' return during a Trump administration, a presidency? Well, I, I'm going to say this. Nobody knows the day or hour, but I'm going to say there's a high, 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 huge possibility that Jesus returns during the Trump presidency. Oh, yeah, because when I read articles like this, Trump raises $30 million in first quarter, because for the last month, the, uh, the news cycles and the news organizations have been screaming that Bernie Sanders and blah, 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 uh, and their numbers that they're raising. Peter or what's his name? Well, Beta O'Rourke. I say Peter. Beta O'Rourke. Oh, his numbers and he's raising money. Look what Bernie's raising. And then Trump outdoes them all. Even combined, Trump raises $30 million in the first quarter, smashing Democrat numbers. The first quarter of 2019, President Trump raised a self reported $30 million for his re election campaign, blazing past the fundraising totals of the Democratic candidates. <laughs> It appears his plan to file re-election paperwork on the night of his inauguration has paid off. Hello! In addition to the $30 million raised by the campaign, the Republican National Committee has reportedly raised $46 million for their 2020 candidate. In addition to the $30 million raised by the campaign, the Republican National Committee has reportedly raised $46 million. <laughs> on top of that, what? According to RNC Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel, the campaigns had eight had eight seven-figure days in 2019. Eight seven-figure days. Wow, that's a lot of money. In 2019, and 100,000 new donors since January. 100,000 new donors since January. <laughs> with, their <laughs> with their donor bases intact and no primary challengers to split up donors, incumbents enjoy natural fundraising advantages. Woo! And Trump is significant, significantly outpacing his Democratic rivals. 
That's, I think that's one of the reasons why Hillary Clinton is very scared and said no, that she's not going to run again for presidency because she knows that she's going to be you know, chewed up and spit out again. I don't even think Republicans, any, any of the Republicans really want to run against Trump because it, it'll be like a waste of time. <laughs> like they found out in 2016, yeah. And uh, all these uh, Democratic uh, challengers are like, who are they? Do they have a chance? No, no. Does, seriously, does creepy Joe Biden have a chance? No way. Nobody's going to vote for creepy Joe Biden. Oh, they'll get people, you know, uh, the they'll get double voting, dead voters. They'll get, uh, you know, illegal immigrants, maybe some of them, you know. Uh, they'll have a ballot box fixing that, but it won't. It won't tip the scales for uh, creepy Joe Biden, or or, or I, I think this guy. He's a Cochester, really. And if you look at uh, Bernie Sanders, the communist, and it's a joke. Really, it is a joke. The only people that are lifting them up are are the mainstream media, uh, fake media. Yeah, and, and nobody nobody really takes them seriously. And then Trump just comes in here and goes, boom, in your face. I got 30 million, boom, without even trying. And now, what, another 46 million. Trump raised more in the first quarter than the top two Democrats combined. Bernie Sanders, 18.2. And Kamala Harris with 12 million. <laughs> and total eight Democrats who reported the first quarter numbers have raised a combined 65.8. Well, if you add Trump's 30 plus the 40, what is it, 46? That's 76. So he's beating them all together, all combined. Yeah. Well, we don't know. Trump's going to be the Republican nominee. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, so here it says, uh, well, actually it says here, in, in total, the eight Democrats who reported their first quarter numbers have raised a combined 65.8. It's not quite 66. Far less than Trump's. Now it's 82 million total. 82. 46 plus 30 looks like 76, but there must be some six other million somewhere in there. <laughs> Raised a combined 65, not, not, not quite 66 million. Far less than Trump's 82 million. Bingo! Total of his own fundraising and the RNC money. 82 million in your face. And that's all the Democrats combined. And I'm saying that why? Is Trump Jesus Christ? Not Trump, not Jesus Christ. But he's definitely been put there by the Lord for a specific reason. And are the scriptures pointing to Jesus Christ's return during the Trump presidency? In a moment. Look at verse, well, I'm, I'm reading from verse 52. But if you read from uh, verse 51, 1 Corinthians 15, 51, Behold, I show you a secret. It's the Apostle Paul by the Holy Spirit in the Bible says, Behold, I show you a secret. Behold, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, Behold, I show you a secret. <laughs> I like secrets, don't you? Paul said, We shall not all sleep or die. Well, Hallelujah. And past the Donald Trump, yeah. We shall not all die. So he's t obviously talking about the next rapture. There's been many raptures in the past. Enoch was raptured, taken to heaven, spirit, soul, and body. Elijah was taken to heaven, spirit, soul, and body, and others. Jesus was even taken to heaven, spirit, soul, and body. That was a rapture when Jesus was taken to heaven. Yeah, why not? These people have been taken. And then you have a whole bunch of people, the resurrection of Jesus that were raptured, speaking about the Holy Week and the Passion of the Christ. Yeah, and the next great rapture is about to happen. Even Paul said that he knew somebody that was raptured, that was taken to the third heaven. And then the next great next rapture is about to happen. And then after, after this next great rapture, you're going to have the great tribulation. But during the great tribulation period, you'll have another rapture of 144,000 Jews that come to Jesus that are raptured. You'll have the two witnesses raptured to heaven, spirit, soul, and body. Sure. Oh, four. So it's not some kind of weird doctrine that somebody made up somewhere to fool people. It's throughout the whole Bible. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established, right? It's throughout the Bible. <clears throat> so when you read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, I show you a secret. Behold, I show you a secret. I want to know a secret. 
we shall not all sleep or die. Well, hallelujah. But we shall all be changed. What? Then he goes into verse 52, which is Trump's name in the Bible. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in a split second, at the last Trump. <laughs> at the last Trump. <laughs> At the last administration, at the second term, or the last days of his first term. I don't know, but I'm going to stay ready, aren't you? Or get ready and stay ready for those that aren't. How do you get ready? Jesus, wash my sins away, fill me with your Holy Spirit, get in the Bible, read it, and do it. Tell people, then watch my videos, understand how, this, how these things work. Don't join religion, don't join churches, synagogues, mosques, temples, organizations, join Jesus. You and Jesus and the Bible. Yeah, <laughs> that's the safest way. There's so much contamination out there. There's so many people that are trying to uh, push their own agenda and their own old weirdness, own weirdness. I say, stop it, don't get infected. 50% of all Christians around the world will not make the next rapture. It will not be ready when Jesus returns. 50% of Christians worldwide, that's one out of every two. <laughs> Jesus said that in the parable of the ten virgins. I show you a secret. We should not all die, but we should be changed. What? In a moment? In a split second, a twinkle of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound. So, is it a coincidence or is it a clue? I think it's a clue. And I'm, am I saying that, uh, that Jesus is going to return during the Trump presidency? He might. I, th I do think it, it could be a clue. I do think it could be a huge clue. It happens to be uh, Trump's presidency when the Antichrist gets kicked out of the uh, out of the White House. Trump, the Antichrist, gets kicked out of the White House by Trump, by Trump, by Donald J. Trump, and his name happens to be in First Corinthians fifteen fifty two. At the time uh, th that Paul's talking about the next rapture, <laughs> ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> Who's there? Trump's here. <laughs> knock, knock. <laughs> For the trumpet shall sound. So is it God's fault that Trump's name is Trump and there's going to be a trumpet that's blown? I don't think so. <laughs> coincidence? I think more than a coincidence. Because if Trump came in uh, and didn't kick, say, say, say Trump came in and there was other presidents that came in after Obama. Say someone else became president after, after Obama uh, maybe a president or so, uh, and then Trump came in. I know he's he, it, it, physically it can't happen because Trump's already at that age that uh, he wouldn't be president in the years following. But I'm just saying, I think it's very, very strange that Trump comes into power, never held any kind of public office before, wasn't a mayor, representative, senator, congressperson, none of that, comes in to be the president of the U.S., Boom, first try. <laughs> that in itself is a miracle. That is a sign and a wonder that just goes, whoa, flash, 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 flash. Then, that's amazing. Then he kicks out of office, happened to be kicking out Barack Obama, the Antichrist. Flashing, flashing, flashing. Then his name happens to appear in one of the most famous scriptures of the next rapture. I'm just saying it's in there. <laughs> <laughs> we shall not all die. Look at verse 57. First, for time's sake, 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Uh, scroll down uh, several verses. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Gives us the victory. Wow. You know, it seems like everything Trump puts his hand to ends up being uh, brilliant. And even like I said, the, the, the several mistakes he's made in foreign policy or domestic policy, they turn around quickly and go in the right direction. It's like there's an unseen hand, God's hand, that is, that is helping him, even when he makes mistakes, which are not that, uh, not that uh, common, really. Thanks be to God, which gives us the victory. What victory? The 2016 election? How about the 2020 election? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Is Jesus Christ fighting for Trump? Yeah, and Revelation 13, 3 and 13, 5, I saw one of his heads, this is the New World Order, the beast system, wounded to death. This is talking about the Antichrist. 
One of the heads were in the scripture were, was referring to the Antichrist. How do you know? I saw one of his heads as a wounded to death. Obama gets kicked out, loses all his power. His, but his deadly wound was healed. It's going to come back into power. Well, how do you know that? Verse 5. And all the world wondered after the beast because he's opening his mouth around the world. Barack Obama, verse 5. And there was given unto him. Obviously, this head that was wounded to death is talking about a man. But there was given unto him a mouth. A platform speaking great things and blasphemies. Terrible anti-Christ, anti-biblical behavior and actions and speech. And power was given unto him, unto him, one, one, of, one of those heads that were wounded is a him. From verse 3 and verse 5. <clears throat> given unto him, given unto him, it's a man. And power was given unto him, a man, to continue 42 months. What do you mean continue? Obviously he was in power for 8 years. Barack Obama, then he's going to continue for 42 months. And if the next rapture happens during a Trump presidency, who was the last president before Trump? Barack Hussein Obama, the Antichrist. Can't you see Barack Hussein Obama coming, coming and saying, well, I'll help out since, you know, all these people are now missing from the earth. I'll help out as some kind of interim president for 42 months. I'm just saying high, huge, bigly, big possibility that the next rapture happens during a Trump presidency. <laughs> it was given unto him, the Antichrist, to continue 42 months. Almost a whole uh, four years of a presidential United States administration. That is clues to the Great Tribulation. When the Antichrist comes back into power, that's, what, that's how long the Great Tribulation will be for, 42 months. <laughs> it's not that difficult. So when I put these together... In a moment, the twinkle of an eye, at the last Trump, at the last Trump, at the last Trump. If Trump continues the way he is going and doesn't fall off the rails or go AWOL or just have a total meltdown, he should win 2020 with no problem and even bigger than 2016. Yeah, and that, this, and that and these things could be the fulfillment of this scripture in verse 52 talking about the last Trump, his second administration, the last time he can run for office and win and his last four years. So just think about it. If you knew that Jesus was coming back, say in the next two years or less, or in, the, in a Trump second administration, which would make it about four plus two years, a little less than six years, what would you do? Well, then do it. Yeah. If you knew that Jesus was coming back within a six year or less time period, what would you do for him? Then do it. Then do it. <laughs> you're never going to uh, regret working for the Lord witnessing for the Lord, giving to the Lord praying for the Lord doing the word of God Yeah, if he comes during the six year period or less at, in a Trump administration and you're ready, if he doesn't you're still, you still did, did what he wanted to and you're still ready it's a win win situation Verse 51, 1 Corinthians 15, 15, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. I show you a secret. We shall not all die, but we shall be changed. Woo! Thanks be to God. Thanks be unto God, which gives us the victory. And so when I read articles like that, Trump's 82 million, more than them all together. <laughs> CNN reports almost 99% of donations to the campaign were $200 or less. With an average donation of $34. Wow. More than the 30 million number, those small donations should catch Democrats' attention. Oh, that means the whole lot of people give it. <laughs> As primary candidates like Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren reject big ticket fundraising in favor of small individual donors, it appears that the president could be running their game more effectively. Oh! I mean, just look at uh, Tiger, Win uh, Tiger Woods wins the Masters. Hasn't won a, a, a major title in 11 years and happens to win it yesterday. <laughs> and they happened, and, and, and Tiger Woods happens to be a, a good friend of President Trump. <laughs> Think about it. Trump just said today that he's going to give Tiger Woods a medal. Yeah, here, three hours ago, four hours ago, two hours ago. Trump to award Tiger Woods the Presidential Medal of Freedom. CNN.com, Fox News. Trump to give Tiger Woods 
Presidential Medal of Freedom after Masters 2019 win. <laughs> Yahoosports.com. Trump to award Tiger Woods the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Everything is turning up roses for Trump. Even Tiger Woods. <laughs> In spectacular fashion. I mean, it, it, people were crying. People were just going, oh, how's this ever? We thought this would never happen again like this. This is outdone all go golf history, this, that, and this, that, and the other. And uh, just the remarkable comeback of Tiger Woods. And I, what I liked about Tiger Woods over the last year or two is that Tiger Woods refuses to put down Trump. The media tries to cause uh, Tiger Woods to put down Trump. But he says, no, he's my friend. And I said this yesterday, I did a program before the Masters were finished, and I said, I hope that Tiger Woods wins for Trump's sake. Right in your face, a black man and Trump sitting in the White House having tea, <laughs> or whatever. It's getting better than that. Uh, Tiger Woods is going to get the Presidential Medal of Freedom from Trump. Oh, and that's going to squash all this racist bull crap that the, that the New World Order fake news pushes against Trump. Trump loves all people, black and, uh, you know, red and, black and white, uh, red and white, yellow, purple, green. Yeah, <laughs> they are precious in his sight. <laughs> Trump loves all the people of the world. <laughs> Gerald, that's a song about Jesus. Yeah, well, Jesus lives in Trump. Trump is born again, spirit -filled. I'm just saying, I've been looking at these scriptures my whole life, and I am not going to rule out anything, anything. Daryl, do you think that Tiger Woods uh, won? Because of, a, of the Trump presidency? Why not? Why, why wouldn't God cause Tiger Woods to win to help a Trump presidency? You, you tell, me what's more, t tell me what's more important in these last days. <laughs> to push for, for the agenda of Jesus against the New World Order? I don't see what's more important. So if Jesus wanted Tiger Woods to win, to go to the White House, to help Trump's presidency, well, hallelujah, and pass the Tiger Woods. <laughs> I'm telling you, huge, huge clues in these last days. Listen, if you're not ready, get ready. Jesus, wash my sins away, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Get in the Bible, read it, and do it, and watch my videos. DarylLawsonLive.com, DarylLawson.com. Help yourself. <laughs> help yourself. Help, help yourself out. Yeah. <laughs> help me help you. <laughs> Remember that, Jerry McGuire? <laughs> Help me help you. <laughs> Listen, I, I know these things uh, since a child. And I'm trying to help people to go forward and not backwards. And pay attention to what we have right in front, front of our faces. We are a privileged generation. Why? Because, well, we have the power of the Holy Spirit being poured out now more than ever before. And we have the internet to bypass the fake news, fake religion, fake politicians to get the information. Why do you think Trump won 2016? The power of the Holy Spirit and the internet. Why is Trump winning uh, and, and, and continuing to win? Power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus the Spirit, and the Internet. <laughs> we are privileged, my friend, to have this knowledge at the tips of our fingers in our smartphones and our smart devices 24-7. I'm telling you, uh, you should be thanking God every day that you get to be alive. Maybe some of the people, and hopefully all of us, will be the people that are around when the next rapture happens. There are lots of lives summing up. I love you. I will see you in the next show. Pass the video to other people. Thanks for your prayers and financial support. There are lots of God bless you. I love you. Bye for now.